What is going on, beautiful people of the world? My name is Garrett Wolf, and I am the host of the number one podcast for people who are trying to go from saggy flabs to six-pack abs. I've built my body over the last eight years, and in the last three years, I've helped hundreds of online clients shred unwanted fat and embody the best version of themselves. Now, let's jump right into today's show. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Alpha Movement Podcast. This is the number one show for people who are trying to go from saggy flabs to six-pack abs, all without giving up the most enjoyable aspects of their life. In today's episode, we are going to be going over a list of 10 things to be grateful for, even though you might be overweight. All right, you guys already know the deal. If at any point during this episode you enjoy what I have to say or you take some value from this podcast, then please screenshot my face. Share it to your Instagram stories, tag me at underscore Garrett Wolf, and I will reshare it to my story and send you a free gift. Other than that, guys, these are the top 10 things that you should be grateful for, even though you might be overweight, because I know it can be really easy to get down on yourself. It can be really easy to lose motivation when you're going through, when you're going about this fitness journey. When you're trying to lose weight, it can get really, really hard, and you might hit some brick walls. Actually, you're going to hit some brick walls 100% of the time. You're going to run into adversities. You're going to run into problems and you're going to run into struggles. And it's important to try to understand what you should be grateful for because when you run into these problems, it's easy to get down on yourself and it's easy to see the negative. But if you just look at the positive more often, we talk about this all the time, your frequency is what you frequently see. So if you're constantly focusing on the negative, it's going to be easy to get down on yourself and it's going to be easy to want to quit. But if you focus on these 10 things that you should be grateful for, then you shouldn't run into a problem and you should be able to keep going. So I have a list here. I have a list of 10 things that you should be grateful for. I came up with them this morning when I was writing my gratitudes and affirmations, part of my morning routine. When I wake up, I like to, uh, I keep a notebook right on my desk there. And when I wake up, I write a list of 10 things that I'm grateful for and 10 affirmations that I want to come true within my life. And when I was doing this, I was like, you know, I should write down another list of 10 things that you should be grateful for when you're overweight. Because I think a lot of people run into these kind of mindset barriers and mindset blockades when they're trying to lose weight because they get super down on themselves. They think they're like so deep in the negative that they can't bring themselves up, that they can't, you know, fix the problem that they created. But it's just the fo- what you're focusing on is what you're going to see, you know, where focus goes, energy flows is the saying. So If you constantly see the negative, it's going to be really easy to want to quit. It's going to be really easy to get down on yourself. And if you decide to see the positive, right, if you identify the opportunity within the adversity, then you will be able to push forward and you will be able to see success in your life. So the number one thing you should be grateful for when you're overweight is you have the opportunity to eat a lot of healthy food, right? Because when you're skinny, to go in a calorie deficit and to lose weight as like a skinny or a skinny fat person, you're gonna get to eat something around the realm of 1,800 to 2,200 calories. 2,200 is really on the high end. Like that's if you're really lucky when you're trying to lose weight. For a normal person, it's gonna be like 1,800. My diet right now for contest prep is 1,975, but we're gonna have to go lower and lower and lower. Like we're gonna get to the 16, the 1,400 realm. So I really get like one to two meals a day realistically. But for someone who's overweight, say you're like really, really overweight, you're like 250 pounds, to lose weight, you get to eat 2,500, 2,600 calories of all this healthy food. And it's gonna make you feel so much better. You're going to feel so much more satiated because healthy foods are really, really filling. They're really, really high in fiber. They're high in micronutrients. They're high in water a lot of the time because you're going to be eating a lot of vegetables. So you're going to be able to eat all these healthy foods, these voluminous meals, and you're going to feel a lot more full, a lot more satiated, and a lot more satisfied than somebody who's skinny and trying to lose weight because they're going to have to eat you know, very minimal amounts of food when you're skinny, when you're trying to lose weight, like I said, you get one to two meals, and you should be grateful for being overweight, because you get two to four meals throughout your day, and you get to feel full and satisfied, because we get to fill up that stomach, you might be, you know, overweight and large on the outside, but your stomach doesn't really grow that much given it does grow a little bit. But it's not that much bigger than my stomach or some skinny person's stomach. So really, at the end of the day, you get to feel a lot more satiated and a lot more satisfied from the meals that you eat. And I think that that is something that you should be grateful for. 
Number two, you get to go for long walks outside. All right, this one is awesome because you can multitask when you're walking outside. You don't just have to walk and kind of listen to the birds and listen to the wind and do nothing, right? I like to walk and listen to podcasts or walk and call up some of your friends, get some of their mindsets, ask them about their day. Listen to an ebook. I was actually going for a walk on a treadmill yesterday and I was getting so bored. So I actually, I was on a treadmill, right? I wasn't on a walk outside, but I was still walking, getting my steps in. So I actually turned on Netflix and I started watching one of my favorite Netflix shows as I was walking. And the more overweight you are, the more steps you're going to have to get throughout the day. So you can just turn on Netflix. It's a great way to get steps in and fucking, you know, satisfy yourself, satisfy your cravings. Cause I know a lot of people, especially me, I struggle with this a little bit too. They like to binge watch Netflix at night. They like to binge like their favorite shows. And maybe your thing is YouTube. Maybe your thing is podcasts. I like to watch all these things, YouTube, podcasts, eBooks, Netflix. I like to watch it all. So when I go for walks, I walk about 10,000 to 15,000 steps every single day right now. And that gives me like an hour to two hours on the treadmill to do whatever I want, listen to whatever ebook I want, watch whatever show I want. And like I said, I just threw on some Netflix and it was awesome. Frankly, I'm going to start watching Netflix pretty much every single time at this point because it was just so easy. I was just watching my show, going for a walk. It was great. And when you're overweight, you get to go for a lot more steps than I do. I mean, I'm doing 10 to 15,000 because I'm on contest prep, but normally I would be getting like five to 10,000 realistically. But if you're overweight, you're going to be going for 10 to 20,000 at the end of the day, maybe even more depending on how much food you really want to eat when it comes down to it. So I think that's another thing you should be grateful for when you're overweight and trying to lose weight. Number three, you caught it before it's too late. And that is something you should be grateful for because there are a lot of people who do not catch this problem. They fail to identify that they are overweight. They fail to identify how bad they're feeling because food is incredibly addictive. People fall into this mindset where they're like, oh, I don't feel that bad eating this food. I don't feel that bad. I'm not that overweight, right? Everything's fine. And then eventually they turn into like this 300 pound person who can't even get down, who can't even bend over and pick something up off the ground. And I think you should be grateful that you identified it before it was too late, especially if you're just a little bit overweight. Maybe you're two, maybe you're 230 pounds, maybe you're 225, maybe you're 250. At least you're not 300 pounds and you identified it before it was too late because it really can become something that is a disease like morbid obesity something that can't really be fixed people get to the point where they can't even walk on treadmills anymore so if you can't walk on a treadmill anymore it's going to be pretty hard for you to lose weight at the end of the day so you should be grateful that you identified your problem before it became too late number four you get to show everyone who the fuck you really are. So this is something that I was super excited about because my transformation took about eight years and I just really wanted to show everyone what I was made of. So this is an opportunity for you to make an incredible transformation and to show everyone what you're really made of, to show everyone that they were wrong, to show everyone who you really are, to show everyone that was making fun of you, everyone that didn't think you could do it. Everyone always chirps you when you start a fitness journey, right? They're like, especially if you're overweight, they're like, oh, like fatso's doing a fitness journey, right? Fucking this guy came to me yesterday. He was in my DMs and he's like, man, I just really want to transform because everyone at school is just calling me man tits and like jiggly titties. And I was like, bro, I I get that. Like I, I was getting all kinds of comments like that, all kinds of chirps when I was back in school on my fitness journey. And one thing that really kept me going was just knowing in the back of my head that I would show them who the fuck I am, show them what I'm really made of and show them at the end of the day who I can be, who I can become and what I can pull from the depths of my soul and put it out into this reality. And I think that's something that you should be incredibly grateful for. You shouldn't get down on yourself based on what other people are saying. You should be excited. You should be amped up by these people. I think it's uh, it's either Joko, Joko Willink or it's David Goggins who says, I think it's David Goggins. He says, keep a list of the people that chirped you in the back of your head so that when you're feeling this adversity, when you're feeling like you want to quit, when you're walking on the treadmill and you, you're already at 10,000 steps, but you need to get to 15, right? When you're in the gym and you need to add an extra five pounds on each side 
and you just can't seem to muster up the willpower. Keep a list of everyone who doubted you in the back of your mind and be ready to pull upon that list when you need motivation, when you run into these adversities. And that is what's going to keep you going. That's what's going to keep you fueled. That's what's going to keep you pumped up. And that's what's going to get you pushing across that finish line. And I think that is something to be incredibly grateful for. Number five, you get to have a juxtaposition because, you know, there are skinny people, there are skinny fat people, there are overweight people, and there are obese people, right? And when you're skinny and you decide to gain a bunch of muscle, you don't really have a juxtaposition. Or when you're skinny fat and you get to have a bunch of muscle, you have kind of a minimal juxtaposition, right? But when you're super overweight and you turn into somebody who's fit, somebody who's athletic, somebody who gains a shit ton of muscle, loses a bunch of fat, you get to have that juxtaposition. You get to actually know which lifestyle was better, which lifestyle you like more. You get to ask yourself, do you like the overweight lifestyle better or do you like being fit better? And if you really don't don't like being fit better, then you can quit all these action steps and just get overweight again and live like that. But at least you know, at least you took the action step in reality in your life so that you don't have to wonder throughout your day to day. You get to actually know deep inside of your heart that you made the right decision or that you made the wrong decision, but at least you tried. And at the end of the day, I think that is in fact something to be incredibly grateful for. Number six, you won't feel regret when you're 70. This kind of ties into the juxtaposition thing because one of my greatest fears is laying on my deathbed, not, maybe not even your deathbed, just laying in your bed, 70 years old, 60 years old, 50 years old, whatever. You could even be 40, 30. You could be 80 years old, 90 years old. The point is you're laying in your bed regretting and wondering what could have happened if you just decided to try. And this is something to be grateful for. Something to remember is that you won't regret it when you're older because at least you gave it your best shot. At least you gave it a try. At least you can say you woke up every single day and you attacked your goals and you tried your hardest to make your impact on this world. You tried your hardest to change your body, to lose that fat, to lose that weight. You tried your absolute hardest. And that is something that you should be incredibly grateful for because you won't regret it when you're 70 like so many people do. I think they did a study, right? This is funny. Does anybody know Prince EA? He made this video a long time ago. He's like, there was a study done, a hospital study. Does anybody remember that line? That shit was so funny. There was a study done, a hospital study. And they asked all these old people who are like laying on their deathbeds. They're like, do you regret like not taking action in your life? And I think it was like 80 or 85% of them said that, yes, they regretted not taking action. They regret not doing this. They regret not doing that. And that's why I choose to live my life in this way where I won't have any regrets. And it's not like I don't have any regrets. It's just I choose to live my life by taking action steps throughout my throughout my day to day life by getting 1% better. If I see something and I want to do it and I want to attack it, then I'm going to do it right? So that I don't have to wake up in 10 years, in five years, even tomorrow, so that I don't have to wake up with regret. Because I remember being a kid and just not trying my hardest at track practice, not trying my hardest in school, not trying my hardest in Taekwondo, all these stories I could bring up. And I just regret it so much because what's the point of doing something if you're not going to try your hardest? What's the point of even trying if you're not going to give it your all? I never want to wake up and regret a decision or regret an action step that I took. I want to try every Everything I can do everything in my power. My mentor says it like this when it comes to business. I'm either going to be a millionaire or I'm going to be homeless, right? And I don't want anything in between because at least I gave it my all. And even if I fail, I'll be fucking homeless and I'll figure it out from there. But I never want to be comfortable sitting in my bed wondering what could have happened if I just tried a little bit harder. So that's something you can be incredibly grateful for when you're overweight and you're starting a fitness journey is that you won't feel that regret when you're older because at least you tried and that is something that you should be incredibly fucking grateful for because no almost nobody tries in this world anymore people think that trying is lame people think trying is stupid at this point and i think i say to those people they are fucking stupid you know what because you're going to be older laying on your bed having somebody else wipe your fucking ass and you're going to realize that you didn't take any action and it's your fucking fault that you're in the position that you're in right now. And there is nobody who can save your bitch ass. There is nobody who can save you from the depths of your own despair because you made the decision not to try. So you should be grateful that you are overweight and you're at least trying to lose some weight. And that is something to be incredibly grateful for. Number seven, you get to feel way better 
And that's something to be incredibly grateful for. Because again, this whole juxtaposition thing, people who have eaten healthy all their lives, they don't really understand what it feels like to be addicted to food, what it feels like to overconsume, what it feels like to overindulge, stuff yourself, overeat all this shit food, overintake sugar, overeat all this disgusting food and feel like absolute shit. I know what this feels like because I was overweight. I was 14 years old, 5'9", 195 pounds. I would eat an entire box of Gushers. They literally had 90 packs. It was like 30 to 90 packs in this Costco box of Gushers. And I would eat them all, every single pack. And I remember that feeling. I felt like I just wanted to throw up. I felt like if I moved in the wrong direction, if I swayed the wrong way, I would puke up all this sugary nastiness, all this disgusting sludge. And you just feel like such a slob. You feel like you can't move. You feel like a slug. You feel like you're just kind of moving throughout your day with no intention, no purpose, and no reason to even be alive. And it is a terrible feeling. And when you have that juxtaposition, when you start eating healthy, when you start getting your water intake down, when you start moving, when you start gaining muscle, it feels so goddamn good. You know, Arnold, he says it feels like a fucking orgasm throughout his entire body when he's pumping up his muscles because with that juxtaposition, when you're overweight, you feel like shit. And when you're in shape and you're fit, you feel fucking amazing. So you have that juxtaposition and that should be something that you are incredibly grateful for because someone that doesn't have that com comparison, that contrast, that juxtaposition to understand what it feels like to be fat, overweight, you know, addicted to food, they're not going to know how hard you have to work. They're not going to know how much better you truly feel when you're in shape, when you're healthy, when you're actually eating healthy foods, fruits and vegetables, meats, you know, clean carbs, not eating these disgusting, you know, sugary ass foods, these hyper palatable sodium salt filled foods that are just disgusting for you and make you feel like absolute shit. If you go on a fitness journey and you start eating healthy and you really like go for it, you start eating healthy for not just a month, not just two months, I'm talking about years, one to two years, you're eating healthy and then you go and eat some shit food on the weekend, you'll feel like ass. I promise you, you will feel like ass. I've experienced this in my own life so many times. And it is crazy how much how much you get numb to it when you're overweight, how much you're numb to it when you're fat, because you're, you're kind of feeling that all day. You get better, right? Your body's an adaptation machine. You will adapt to any stimu stimulus you give it. So when you eat all this shit food, you start to adapt and your, your baseline for how you feel just goes down and down and down. But you don't really know that because you have no juxtaposition. So this is something you should be incredibly grateful for is that you get to feel so much better than you did when you were down here addicted to food, eating sugary, disgusting, hyper palatable foods. And I think that's something to just be incredibly grateful for. Number eight, you likely have more muscle than skinny people. This is something that's actually kind of cool. When you're fat, you need to move around a lot more body mass. You need to lose, move around a lot more body weight, right? This is why fat people tend to have big calves. This is why fat people tend to be stronger. It's not just because mass moves mass, though that is true. Your fat is not contracting. Your fat is not, you know, creating more force for you. It's just that you know, you have to move around more weight throughout the day. So something to be grateful for is that you likely have more muscle than someone who's skinny, you likely have a lot more muscle than a skinny person. And so you should be excited to lose that fat and expose all of your muscle that you've had, excuse me, that you've built up from being fat, right? You're going to have bigger calves, you're going to have bigger arms, you're likely going to have a broader you know, shoulders, you're, you're likely going to have a bigger, more developed chest, and you're likely going to have some big quads. Fat people have big quads because they have to walk around with all this mass. I'm talking about like overweight people, not just like skinny fat people, but really fat, really overweight people are going to have more muscle mass than someone who's skinny, you know, skinny like me. And that, that is something to be incredibly grateful for at the end of the day. Number nine, you have the opportunity to develop an iron mind because, when, you know, the first step in becoming a successful person, I believe, is losing weight, is, you know, fixing your body, getting your fitness right, getting your fitness in shape, getting yourself in shape, getting your diet right, your nutrition right, your water intake right. And this is the first step to really becoming a successful human, in my opinion. I think this is kind of the first quest, the first checkpoint, if you will, to the to the game of life, right? At the end of the day, you should be incredibly excited to craft your mind. You should be incredibly excited that it's hard because the harder something is, the harder you're going to be. The more adversity you go through, the fucking tighter, the more, you know, fortified your mindset will be the harder it will be to throw you off the track so the fact that you're overweight up here and you need to get to a you know 
a better, more in shape body down here, you should be excited that you're further away. You should be grateful that you're further away than maybe an overweight person, a skinny fat person or a skinny person because you get to go through more adversity and that's something to be grateful for because that will build character, that will build an iron mind and it will make you more likely to be success successful Excuse me, in other areas of your life because like I said, the more adversity you go through, the harder it will be to break you and the harder your mind will be at the end of the day. So that's something that you should be grateful for. And number 10, guys, the last thing you should be grateful for, even though you're overweight and you're trying to lose weight, is you can inspire others to do the same thing. All right, because it's one thing to be skinny and then gain a lot of muscle. It's one thing to be a little bit overweight or skinny fat and gain a bunch of muscle, lose a little bit of fat. But it's another thing. It's a whole different thing when you're incredibly overweight or incredibly obese and you go from obese all the way up here to fucking in shape, shredded six pack, muscles popping out of your shirt and no fat to even look at anymore. And that is something you should be incredibly grateful for because now not only do you get to flex on the haters, not only do you get to show everybody what you're made of, not only do you get to feel way better, but now you can inspire others by showing them what is possible in real time, showing them what you can do in real life and showing them what can be done with just a little bit of dedication, a little bit of an iron mind and making 1% progress every single motherfucking day. All right, guys. And that is 10 things to be grateful for, even though you're overweight and trying to lose that unwanted fat. That brings us to the end of this podcast. If at any point you enjoyed what I had to say, or you think what I had to say is valuable, please screenshot my face, share it to your Instagram stories, tag me at underscore Garrett Wolf, and I will reshare it to my story and send you a free gift. Other than that, guys, it has been your boy Garrett Wolf. Try to be grateful today. Write down 10 things that you're grateful for because your frequency is what you frequently see. So if you choose to be positive, you will make leeway towards your goals. I promise you that. Again, it has been your boy Garrett Wolf, and I will see you all in the next podcast episode. Peace, peace. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Hopefully you got some value. If you did get value and you want to learn a little bit more about how you can go from saggy flabs to six pack abs, just head over to my Instagram at underscore Garrett Wolf. DM me the word six pack and I'll reach out to you and see if I can help. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in today and I will see you all in the next podcast episode. Peace, peace.